Hello, today we're going to talk about order, pairs, and relations. This comes from Chapter 2, Section 1C of our textbook, Pre-Algebra Advanced. This is Mr. Funk, and it's September 12, 2012. We're going to start off with some vocabulary here. Ordered pairs and relations vocabulary. The ordered pair. An ordered pair is a numbers, a pair of numbers used to locate any point on a coordinate plane. For example, 2, comma, 3. The x coordinate is the first coordinate in an ordered pair. In our example, the 2 is the x coordinate. The 3 would be the y coordinate, the second value in the order in the coordinate pair. A relation is a set of ordered pairs and can be represented in a table, graphed, or by simply listing the ordered pairs within fancy brackets as the example listed there. Vocabulary continued. A set of ordered pairs can be, well, we already said that one. Domain. Domain is a set of all the first coordinates, all of the x coordinates. No repeated values listed in order from least to greatest. Range is a set of all the second coordinates, all the y values of the ordered pairs. Repeated, no repeated values listed in order from least to greatest. Today we're going to learn that you have to run to the ladder, run to the ladder before you can climb up or down that ladder. We're also going to learn that mathematicians love to alphabetize things. We're going to learn how the real world doesn't always create nice straight line graphs, but we can use the scattered data points to see and possibly predict trends. Plotting points on the corner plane. When plotting or graphing points on the corner plane, you need to remember to walk to the ladder before you can go up or down the ladders. You always start at the origin, that zero, zero point. From there, you're going to move left or right depending on that first number. If the number is positive, you're going to move to the right. If the number is negative, you're going to move to the left. Then from that point on the x-axis, you're going to move up or down the y value for the coordinate. Hopefully by now this fact is drilled into your brain, so hopefully you've seen this before. Here are some examples. Graph the following points. 3, 5. We start off at the origin. We move over 3 to the right. Then we have to move up 5, and we put a point. And that is labeled with a label A for our answer there. Do we leave those arrows there? No. Those go away. You're left with just the point and the label. Negative 2 means we're going to the next point. Negative 2 comma 6 means we're going to go 2 to the left. Then we're going to go 6 up from there and plot the point there and label it accordingly. Again, we do not leave those lines. That's just tracing it to find a spot. Negative 4, negative 1 is to the left, 4, down 1, and we put the point there. 2, comma, negative 3 means you're going to the right 2 and then down 3, and that's where we plot the point there. Now, 0, 5 means we're not going to go to the left or right at all. We're going to stay at the origin for that and go straight up for the positive 5 and put a point there. So it's on the y-axis. When the x value is 0, it's going to be on the y-axis. When the y value is 0, it's going to be on the x-axis. Negative 6 means we're going to go start off the origin. We're going to go 6 to the left. And then we're not going to go up and down at all. We stay right there and put the point there. Mathematicians love order. The alphabet is an order that mathematicians love to use when they can. You're going to see throughout the year that in most cases, if you're not sure which comes first, it probably can be determined alphabetically. A coordinate pair consists of an x and a y value. x comes first alphabetically, and it also comes first in the coordinate pair. When collecting data, it is often put into a table first, then graphed. In the real world, data collected will very, very rarely form a perfect line on a graph. However, if the data is graphed, we can often see a trend that can be helpful to know about. We're going to see how this works. You'll want to rough sketch this in your notes so you get an idea what you're doing here. Here we have a table of time and money. I love to walk with money here. So we have our graph set up. 
to graph that, we need to go need our the first column here. The first column comes first is the x values. Second column is going to be your y values. So we need to label the x-axis with time and the y-axis with money. Put in a good interval here. Looks like we're going up to 15 here. I got 16 spots. That works well for me. Looks like counting up by tens works well for the intervals on the y-axis. Now I plotted those points. 130 for the first one. 3, 40 for the second one. Four, uh, 5, 45 for the next one. And so on. I plotted those points. Do you see a trend? I do. I see as time goes by, my money is going up. That's a good thing. It doesn't form a straight line, however, we can tell that money is getting bigger over time. We can even draw a line that shows an approximate trend for the data. This line, when you draw it in, if you're drawing it on your own, you want to make sure that no point is any further away than the others. So you want to make sure it goes through the middle line. Does it have to actually go through any of the points plotted? Not necessarily. But it does need to go through the middle trending area. All right, correlations. A positive correlation is when, as time goes by, your money is going up. That's a positive correlation. As time goes by, if your money goes down, that would be a negative correlation. When you've got dots all over the place like this, there is no correlation. Now, here we got an example. Express the following relation as a table and as a graph. Then determine the domain and range. So we're given this relation. To express as a table, we would have to first create the table, which would look like this, x and y values. Step two, fill the table with the values for x and y for each coordinate pair. The first coordinate pair, negative 4, 5. I put the negative 4 in for the x. I put a 5 in for the y. Then I put in negative 3 and 2 for the next point. 0 and 1. 1 and negative 1. 3 and negative 2 for the last one there. I've now created a table of my relation. This answers the first part of the question. The second part, as a graph, which we'll get to here if it'll let me. So we take that table and we graph those points. So we got a piece of graph paper, take it out, we're going to graph the first point, negative 4, comma 5. Remember that to run before you can jump. So that first one, we go to the left 4 and then up 5. And that's our first point. Second point, starting off of the origin, to the left 3, then up 2. Next point. Zero for the x, it doesn't go up or down at all, it doesn't go left or right at all, it goes up one. One for the x means it goes to the right one, and then down one for the negative one and the y. Next one, last one is three, so we go to the right three. Negative two means we go down two, and that's our points there. This answers the second part of the question. There are still two more parts to this question. Determine the domain and range. When they ask you to determine the domain and range, they do want you to label them. And they want you to actually write out domain and range. Write them out. Don't just put arrows pointing to numbers or pointing to columns. You need to write them out. The domain is all of the x values. So it would be negative 4, 3, negative 3, 0, 1, 3. Those happen to be in order already and there are no repeats, so you're good. Range, negative 2 is all the y values, negative 2, negative 1, 1, 2, and 5. You do need to put them within fancy brackets. You do need to label them as domain and range. Okay, and if you don't label them and write them out separately, you are not going to get credit for it. Don't just write domain with an arrow to the x and a, y, a range with an arrow to the y. Unacceptable. All right. 
tomorrow in class. We're going to start off with this. We're going to do a little more afterwards. We're going to spend a little bit more time with interest. See you in class.